going on, everybody? Welcome to Tavern Talk by Initial Reaction. I'm Philip, and joining me this week is another Philip, Mr. Philip Martin. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Philip is the film critic for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, been reading you for uh, for a long time, and uh, since his fifties. <laughs> no, not, not, I, you know, uh, but no, it, it's it's really a pleasure to have you, here and I appreciate it. And uh, it's special kind of uh, occasion, you know. Uh, since this week we are talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It is the uh, new Quentin Tarantino movie, the ninth film as he would call it. The ninth, the ni- yeah. Uh, stars uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, and just a host of other uh, big name celebrities, peep, actors uh, that uh, you'll probably recognize and it's kind of makes it a fun game, but that's beside the point right now. Uh, initial reaction, what do you think of Tarantino's latest? Wow. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't overreact like that, but I'm going to overreact because, uh, number one, it's, it's like I haven't been the biggest Tarantino fan for the past, I don't know, since Inglorious Bastards, which I... You know, oh, yeah, about a decade there. Yeah, right? yeah, and uh, I sort of thought I had it figured out, and, I, and, you know, I would see his bag of tricks, and I, you know, appreciate it. I thought that he was sort of like a thinking man's Michael Bay, and that he had a lot of technical ability, and I like to watch his films and figure out where he stole his ideas from. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of enjoyed it to a point, and then it would get too long, and he would get too self-indulgent, <laughs> and it would do it would devolve into a Tarantino-type thing, and I would be, okay, that's, that's good enough, but it's not. But this one, <laughs> Can I, can I call it soulful? Yeah, no, it, it, it definitely feels personal. And like on the other side of what you're saying about um, kind of just having this catalog of, of images and, and references to pull from, um, it's, I, I, I always feel like um, I, I take something away. I learn something about film history from his film. So it's always fun to go back and kind of deconstruct where, yeah, like you said, deconstruct where he got that from. but. Uh, for me, it's always like kind of a learning experience because well, I may not have known it prior. I know where he got a lot of this from yeah, because I yeah. happened to grow up in the same part of the country as he did at about the same time. I was about 10 years old living in Southern California okay. I, in 1969 when yeah. this movie is set. Oh, wow. And it's really interesting. I would compare this movie to Roma as much as anything else I can think of. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a memory play. I mean, there's you got the... AM DJs, yeah. the, the real ones, the real Don Steele. You've got uh, Seymour, the uh, master of the macabre, the epitome of evil, the uh, late night host. I used to sit up and watch his uh, his show like on Friday and Saturday nights, the midnight movie. Right. Uh, you've got this, all these textures and the way it, it, it just captures the way it felt. Yeah, all that stuff is very present throughout. Like it, it's very... I don't know if it's, yeah, like you're saying, it's his memory of that time when right. he was that age or when he was younger, you know, probably a child in that, you know, time period and kind of how it felt to him being surrounded by all this. Yeah, like you're saying, a memory play. Like, yeah. this is very much how he how he sees Hollywood through his memories. And, and it's really interesting because the, 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 comp, the, the, the last night, the, yeah. we're not going to spoil what's in the movie. No, 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 but definitely the, not. But the last night is, is considered by... A lot of people to be sort of like the the, the point where the '60s like skidded to a halt. Oh, really? Okay. You know, Joan Didion you know, yeah. said that was like when that happened. Oh, that was the hippie dream was over. Right. Okay. And the way he sort of repurposes, the, you know, the way I, I love the way he uses history. Yeah. Because people who get their history from the movies deserve the history they get. <laughs> right. So if he if he punks somebody, that's fine with me. You know. So. That's, um, yeah. No. That's. But, Interesting, because it's definitely, uh, um, I mean, if you've seen Tarantino's movies in the past, uh, you, you might have a hunch as to where sure. this is going, especially given the, given the title and what it alludes to. But, um, but yeah. uh, for a lot of this, it didn't feel like the Tarantino brand, as you might say. Like, it didn't no. feel as much of what you would expect from him as a director. It felt like a vehicle for Paul Newman and, uh, and, and Robert Redford. Is yes, what it felt yeah, like. very it much. It felt so. like... You know, it really did, it had the feeling of being a 60s, early 70s film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even as it's about 60s and, you know, <laughs> the, the end of the 60s. The end of the 60s, yeah. yeah. And it's, um, you, you, I kind of want to, like, preface people going into this movie who ex- may, might expect, like, a driving plot or, yeah. you know, some very, uh, just, like, 
direct objective because it's it's not that it's you might at the end come out saying well what exactly was I supposed to not not what I was was I supposed to get from it but what was it about yeah. um, but it's really just living with these two guys and, and exploring yeah, that it's, time it's period. About, it's about yeah it, there's a certain amount of wishfulness yes. to it yeah. I mean it is a fairy tale yeah, oh yeah I mean, no. as the title suggests it's a fairy tale and it, but it's really it is about it's about the chemistry between these two and they're great together they are, yeah we should really uh, touch on the, the performances <laughs> yeah I guess. Um, uh, you know Everyone, I feel like, knows uh, DiCaprio is is a great actor. Like, obviously, I mean, beyond Academy Awards or whatever, like, he is one of those guys. Him and Brad Pitt really are like the last of a dying breed as far as old school movie stars old go. Old school movie stars. And yeah. um, and I mean, he, I never, I kind of always expect Leonardo DiCaprio to play Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. but he always. Upends that expectation for me, and, and he definitely did it uh, again here. Even though he's playing an actor, even though he's played, even though he's played an actor who's sort of a Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> right. wannabe. Yes, you know, exactly. Kind of thing. And uh, you know, the, the, he's a washed-up Western star. Yeah. He's a lot like the character in uh, the Bruce Springsteen uh, record, the, the yeah. Western Skies thing, the, and the washed-up old. Uh, it, it, that's just one of those weird cultural coincidences now, because he's got a song on that album about a, a stunt man, and he's got a song on there about a, a washed-up Western star. You know? well, yeah, and it, it is set. That album is actually uh, assembled so it sounds like a, a record from the early seventies. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So, so it's kind of an interesting cultural <laughs> moment we have. We have all these movies that have Charles Manson in them that yes. are either coming out or have just come out. Right. And uh, well, it's fifty years. Yeah. Which it's, uh, and, and like the uh, the other thing I was gonna say was that um, he he kind of. Fancies himself like he wants the Steve McQueen career, like that's what he's kind of yeah. shooting for. Yeah. But he is, but his transition from TV to movies never made that. Uh, he, he couldn't make that jump. He as didn't, much, yeah, right? yeah. He didn't. He didn't get to be Steve McQueen. Right. And they have a really nice way of they do, playing that. Yeah. This. And it's really nice because the, the, there's also a, a nod to uh, uh, a, a '60s series that I have a lot of fondness for. That is just awful. The uh, Matt Helm. <laughs> Dean's Martin, Matt, Matt Helm movies, and they actually use the real footage of Sharon Tate. I was going to say they don't digitally insert no. her in there. That's the real Sharon Tate. Yeah. So you can kind of. There's been some controversy about um, uh, Margot Robbie's, you know, role and how, mm -hmm. or just portraying Tate on. Yeah, portraying and, yeah. Tate and the fact that she's, you know, kind of for a lot of the movies she's sort of a bystander in the whole. Yeah, thing. very much. But. You know, I actually think that works really well. Yeah, but this isn't a movie about Charles Manson or right. Sharon Tate's murder. It's, right. it's really, it's not about that. It's very much uh, a framing device, really, to kind of uh, set this, because it only really takes place within a couple of days, sans one time jump. But yeah, like, there's one chance, yeah, yeah. yeah it's in, it starts out, there's a couple of days in February, and then it jumps to August. Right. And, you know, and... Uh, it's it's a lot more linear than a lot of Tarantino films. Yeah. There are a lot of flashbacks to which had to be fun to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, There's one in particular with Pitt's yeah. character that yes. is just fantastic. Like you get so sucked into it, you forget. But there are all these little tiny like Easter eggs in there. Like uh, Margot uh, Sharon Tate in the movie is yeah. is is going through a Paul Revere and the Raiders phase. Okay. Now you know who lived in the house that she's living in. Before. No, no okay. I, I heard him discuss it. They were talking. It was Terry Melcher, okay, who was Doris Day's son. Okay. Candace Bergen, who was Terry Melcher's yeah. girlfriend, and Mark Lindsay, who was the lead singer of Paul Revere and the Raiders. Oh. That was the immediate tenants to the house oh, before funny. Tate and Polanski moved in. See, this is and this is like the type of stuff I would learn or read about eventually that I like take from his movies that I have I would have no idea. But you know, and then they're playing the Paul Revere record, right? Or exactly. the Revere and the Raiders record, and uh, wow, the, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's so it's cool. easy, it's really you know, and, and I sometimes you know anachronisms don't really bother me and things mm -hmm. like this, and I and, and I did, but I didn't catch it. Yeah, so it didn't, nothing took me out of the movie, which is you know. Yeah, and, and I was going to say, so I, I, having never, uh, I've never even visited California, yeah. but but so having lived there at that time, it felt authentic. Like, felt authentic. So, I, I would be very surprised if, uh, yeah, a lot of the locations are using a reel, the Moose right, Hill yeah. and a lot of the, and I I have walked up that drive, Cielo uh, mm -hmm. Drive. Uh, oh, wow. It's not the same anymore. That house has been demolished and yeah. rebuilt, you know, but I don't know how they 
do that. I mean, that's part of the yeah. the, the magic, the magic. Of this stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like it's just like, really. Yeah, no, so, yeah, I mean, there's just, uh, this movie is nearly three hours. It's two hours and That's, 40 minutes. It's, uh, it, but even then, like, you, it, it sometimes can't, like, as we get towards the end, I guess you could say, it does start to, you start to depends, feel it's like. You know, it depends on your tolerance for that sort of yeah. Tarantino-style violence and stuff like that. That's, I, I mean, I think it's too long. It is a little, but. But it, I wouldn't, you know. Then you start to go in there and yeah, say what would you cut? Because but just living with the with Pitt and DiCaprio's characters for all that you do, it's just like well, I don't want to lose any of it because it's it really is fun to to really just. Well, I'd love to see. I'd love to see that. these guys make a couple more movies together. Yeah, and they say they're going to. They say they want to. Oh, know, I would. whether they can do that or not these days, <laughs> I don't know. And that's the other thing. Like that, they were able to make this movie at this point in time is is kind of crazy. And uh, I, I mean, Tarantino is probably one of the only few who could make this kind yeah. of movie at this point in time. Um, but it's just, yeah, there's a lot to unpack here, I guess, is, yes. is what we're getting I mean, we're not to. even getting to, like, the cameos and the, you no, know, uh, Luke the, Perry's last movie. And yeah. It's really fitting, and really, you know. And yeah, it's, I mean, God, yeah, you have, I mean, Al Pacino is yes. in a movie. And Al Pacino. He's in you forget Tucson. about Al Pacino. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> you have, I mean, uh, the whole Manson gang of girls is, I, I know Yeah, you have, again, you have this whole mythology of Hollywood that is sort of like... It's it's really the end of the studio. It's really the end of the old Hollywood yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're coming to that. You can kind of see it all fading away mm -hmm. and starting to, you know. And there's even allusion to Dennis Hopper, you yeah. know, in there. That's Kurt Russell's in Kurt here for a second. Oh, Kurt Russell, yeah. <laughs> He's in there for a second. I mean, yeah, it's 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 crazy packed, but it is, um, I, I, you know, it. It's gonna. T this is initial reaction, so we're just like, yeah. kind of popping off things that are coming, you know, to the forefront of our minds. But uh, it's gonna take a few days to kind of process it, you know, more fully and just kind of uh, probably appreciate well, this it is, more. This is a, this is like one of those reviews I wouldn't want to write until right a week later. Exactly. You know, yeah. Exactly. I would hate to have to write it on deadline. You know. Yeah. Um, no. And even at two forty, like. That said, I still want to. I would see it again, you know, tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I, it, I enjoyed it that much and would want to go back and live in this world that much more. Uh, but no. So here on uh, Tavern Talk, we do uh, out of five stars. So, uh, what would you give? <laughs> I know. I, I, yeah. yeah well, we have this whole thing. With it. And, yeah. I, I want to give it. You know, it's like it's one of the best movies I've seen this year. Yes. Maybe it's I right know. up there in the top five. Uh, so I gotta say it's a, a four and a half. Yeah. No, I was, I was, no, I was gonna do the same thing. Honestly, four and a half, um, four and a half, a five. Definitely one yeah. of, I, I agree. Definitely one of the best movies I've seen this year, and um, would be very surprised if it didn't make like an end of year list or uh, something like that. But no, I, I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to revisit it and see things, catch things I didn't get before. Um, but as always, we saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at the Movie Tavern, so if you are near a Movie Tavern, definitely be sure to check that out. Uh, from a full menu of food to your standard popcorn and snacks and sodas, you just got to hit that little button and they'll bring whatever you want to your seat. So definitely check out a Movie Tavern if you're near one. Um, and as always, like and subscribe to the channel. We would yes. appreciate it. All the support is very much appreciated. Thank you again, Philip, for joining me. I oh, my pleasure. definitely appreciate it. Well, uh, Thank you for checking us out. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time.